Welcome. Today we're going to solve very simple quadratic equations. And why they're going to be simple is we actually eventually get them down to a single variable squared equaling a number. And all of these simple quadratics, where you have a variable squared equaling a number, will either have two real solutions, one real solution, or two complex or imaginary solutions. Now, the only time, by the way, it would ever have one solution is if the p squared equaled zero. But for this one, remember how we undo a square, and that's what we need to do here, is we need to undo the operation that's being done to the uh, variable. So I'm going to undo that square. p is going to equal the square root of the number on the other side of the equation, but it equals a positive version of that and a negative because remember 2 squared definitely is 4, but also a negative 2 squared will also be a positive 4. So we get two solutions and we got to remember to always type in both solutions. And in fact, it's obvious because it gives you that, that ability to type in both solutions, negative 2 and 2. Oops. <clears throat> okay, so now here they're going to introduce the negative solution, not negative solution, but why we've learned complex numbers are our imaginary solutions. Because when I go to solve this equation, our r is going to equal a positive or a negative square root of negative 81. Well, I can square root the 81, that's 9. I can square root the negative, that's i. So we have either a positive 9i or a negative 9i. So again, when I go to type in my solution, I'll type in 9i and I'll type in negative 9i. Now, it's going to start asking even simpler questions as far as do we ha have no solutions? Do we have two real solutions? Do we have one real solution or do we have two imaginary solutions? By the way, there really never ever should be a time now where we say no solution. There will always be a solution with these quadratic equations. Either two real ones, if the d squared, the variable squared is equal to a positive, which this one is, so this would be two real solutions. If the d squared equals zero, there'll be one real solution, which is zero, because you can't have both a positive zero and a negative zero, it's the same number. Or you'll have two imaginary solutions if the d squared, the variable squared, is equal to a negative number. So here, again, they're asking us to find the solutions to this. Now, if you'll notice, it asks for the answer in rationalized form and simplified. So make sure you do that. Our v is going to equal a positive or negative square root of negative 44. But 44 has a factor of 4 and a factor of 11. Well, and then the negative. So I can square root the negative, that's i. I can square root the 4, that's 2. But I can't square root the 11, so I leave the 11 underneath the square root. And then again, we have both a positive version and a negative. Positive and a negative. So when I go to type this in, I'm going to type in a positive 2i and the square root of 11. And I'm going to type in a negative 2. And by the way, I'm going to do square root 11. And now I'm going to make sure I tab out or move outside of the square root and put the i after it. Because a lot of times that i is put after everything. I would actually write it in beforehand as well because it's less likely to be mistaken as being underneath. But I want to show you that it will accept that. So again, here, all I'm going to do is do the square root of negative 48. One thing I realize is 48 is 16 times 3, and then there's the negative. So when I square root, I get a 4, I get an i, and then the square, 3 stays underneath. And again, we always have a positive or a negative. So I have a positive 4i square roots of 3 and a negative 4i square roots of 3. 
positive 4i square root of 3 and a negative 4i square root of 3. <coughs> Again, this one is asking how many solutions. Since it's a zero, there's only one real solution because zero is a real number and you don't have both a positive and a negative form of it. Here, again, this will probably get easier and easier for you. We get a 5i and a negative 5i. 20, square root of 25 is 5. Square root of the negative is i, and we have a positive and a negative form of it. Now, again, they're going to get to a little bit more complex, but the equation should always simplify down to a single z squared or variable squared equaling a number. Whether it's positive or negative, it won't matter. This one actually looks like it's going to be a positive uh, 9 because I'm going to add right 30 to both sides. And if I add 30, negative 21 plus 30 is 9. So my solutions will be either a positive 3 or a negative 3. Again, minus the 37 over, I'm going to get u squared is equal to a negative 50, 64. Oh, I like the 64 because that means it's going to be an 8. The square root of the negative will be i, so I get an 8i or a negative 8i. Hopefully this has been enough to help you see how to do this. I'm going to, well, this one, you got to divide by 2. But again, divide both sides by 2. Negative, in fact, and negative 2. And then I get the d squared is equal to a negative 49. So that's going to be a plus or minus 7i. 7i or negative 7i. Again, this is going to be one real solution because 8, 0 divided by 8 is 0. This, we're going to add 21 over. That's going to be... Uh, let's see if I'm adding 21, that's going to be a 4, and that's going to be a 6, and it's going to be negative again. So again, it's another plus or minus 8i. 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 I'm going to jump up into the 90s, make sure that there's nothing more complex than that. Yeah, this one. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah, I'm glad I went up higher. Let's do this one. <coughs> We want to, first of all, add the 2 to the x side. So I'm going to have that negative 50w squared equals a positive 2. When I divide now both sides by negative 50, I'm going to get w squared is equal to 1 over 25. That's negative. So now when I square root, w is going to equal a positive or a negative square root of negative 1 over 25, which again is going to be either a positive 1 fifth, that's supposed to be a plus symbol, i, or a negative 1 fifth i. So let's type those in. Again, if you want to use this fraction key, you could do that. One fifth. Just make sure the i is not in the denominator of the fraction. I think you could actually even do a negative one fifth i like that. I believe that works. I really don't like that form because it looks like the i is in the denominator, but it's not. But it does work. <clears throat> this one, we're going to get... the square root of, so we're going to have a 3 over a 64, which means we're going to have a square root of 3 over 8, because we square root all that. The square root of 64 is 8, square root of 3 is that, and we have a plus or minus. So again, this one might have to be using these fraction keys. Do that, do the square root of 3, 
put in the bottom, do an 8, and then over here do a negative fraction, square root of 3, and 8. Submit. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead again, see if there's anything harder. Uh, that one's going to be 0. Mm. This one is, oh wow, that's interesting, z squared, z squared, that's going to be one real solution, just because when you um, add 82z squared to one side and divide, you're going to get z squared equals zero, which is one solution. Just again, just solve. So again, they're getting a little more complex, but they're not that much harder. Let's do this one, okay? So what I'm going to do is add 95q squared to both sides. So I'm bringing this over by adding, which I believe negative 82 plus 95 is going to be 13 Q squared equals, now I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So I'm bringing that over here. If I add 8, that's going to be 65. Now I'm going to divide by the 13. And I get a Q squared equals, let's see if that goes into it. Yeah, that equals 5. So it looks like my solutions will be a positive square root of 5 and a negative square root of 5. This one here, we're going to add four, I like to keep things positive. I'm going to add 48 over this way. That's going to be a positive 5v squared equals a negative 25. Again, divide by the 5, we get v squared equals a negative 5. So we get a positive or negative square root of 5i. Or you could do the i first i square roots of 5, or negative i square roots of 5. Looks like we can even go higher, 96. Q squared equals, oh, what are the two solutions to this equation? Write your answer in simplified rational form. Q squared equals, fill in the missing number so that, oh, <laughs> that's stupid. Not stupid. What they want you to do is actually just say, hey, if one solution is 3i, when I square that, that is going to be a negative 9. So that's what this is. This is going to be a negative 9. And then the other solution is going to be a negative version of it. And that's really what they're trying to lead to is that you they always come in what's called conjugates. Conjugates being one's positive, one's negative. You get a positive 3i and a negative 3i. You always get a positive 6 and a negative 6. And then obviously this would have to be, uh, this would actually have to be negative 36. Watch your signs. Why would it have to be negative 36? Because when I bring it over, it's positive. I don't see any i's here. can't be plus 36 because then I'd minus it over and get a negative 36, which would be 6i and negative 6i. So it's got to be a negative 36. Now we got an i in our solution. And we got a square root of 3, so obviously this is just going to be a negative 3, because then we get a negative i square roots of 3 and a positive i square roots of 3. Last but not least, we get i square roots of 5, so that's going to be a negative 5. So that's just got to be 5, and that's got to be a negative i square roots of 5. If you have any questions, bring them to class, and I will definitely. Hope you.